So, we made it clear that the TCA cycle is going to begin with acetal 4A, which you produce from the bridging reaction. So, have your acetal 4A here from the bridging reaction. This acetal CoA is going to combine with the end product of the TCA cycle. The end product is oxaloacetate. Right? This is oxaloacetic acid or oxaloacetate. This reaction brings in water, the CoA comes off, and particularly the CoA, as we already talked about, that molecules that have a CoA, which we call theoesters, tend to have high energy. So the presence of this CoA as it comes off will drive the synthesis of citrate. Right? So this reaction makes sense thermodynamically. So you would see that your end product is actually going to be your citrate. Okay? Yeah. This is your citrate. The enzyme that catalyzes this reaction is citrate synthase, right? Let me probably write it in red for you. The enzyme is citrate synthase, all right? So the next reaction is that this citrate is going to be isomerized into isocitrate. Basically, this reaction, when you check it in most books, it won't show the fact that there will be an intermediate that will be formed. How this happens is that the citrate is actually going to be first dehydrated, then rehydrated. When citrate is dehydrated, it will form an intermediate called cis aconitate, and then when rehydrated, it will cis aconitate. Cis aconitate. When rehydrated, it will form isocitrate. Why did I mention this? Because the enzyme here would surprise you. It's not what you would expect, as we have been naming our enzymes, you would probably be, called, be expecting to call it citrate isomerase or something, right? It's not. It's actually called aconitase. And the reason is simply because of the intermediate that is actually produced. Make sense? So, the end product is isocitrate, which is basically an isomer of citrate. There, this is isocitrate. The next reaction is that citrate is going to be oxidatively decarboxylated. How? It's going to use an NAD linked dehydrogenase which will oxidize this isocitrate into alpha ketoglutarate. Right? And at the same time, this carbon dioxide is going to come. Right? The end product is going to be alpha ketoglutarate, and already we are seeing production of energy. 
there. As we said, the energy is not going to be produced mainly as a TP, it's actually being produced as reduced equivalents. We were able to demonstrate that in the electron transport chain, this will move us briefly, roughly around 2.5 ATPs, right? So this would involve oxidation. That hydrogen is actually going to go out and that hydrogen, that hydrogen are going to go out. This carbon dioxide is going to go off and the end product would look something like this. This is alpha keto glutarate. Alpha keto glutarate is going to be produced by the enzyme. Can anyone guess what the name of the enzyme is going to be? The enzyme that will oxidize isocitrate into alpha keto glutarate. Do we name them? Yes? Correct. So this enzyme is isocitrate dehydrogenase. Is anyone lost how we just come up with the name? I don't know. How many do? Does anyone know? Anyone lost? Are you lost? Okay. So again, we've been saying we name enzymes based on the reaction they catalyze. So already you know this is catalyzing an oxidation reduction reaction. It's definitely an oxidoreductase. And oxidoreductases, which will catalyze such kind of reactions, would be mainly called dehydrogenases. After all, it's removing hydrogen. Right? So we said you name the enzyme based on the reaction it catalyzes and the substrate. That's one way. Therefore, substrate, isocitrate, enzyme, the dehydrogenase. Isocitrate dehydrogenase. Yeah. Yes. Decarboxylase? Well, that's an interesting way of thinking. But if you remember, even um, the convention of pyruvate into acetyl 4A, the enzyme was not necessarily called as uh, pyruvate decarboxylase per se, right? It's called pyruvate dehydrogenase complex. This one is a secret dehydrogenase because the main reaction here is the oxidation. And through this oxidation, the carbon dioxide also comes. Okay? And it's interesting that the next reaction I'm going to show you would actually be almost exactly the reaction you saw when pyruvate was being converted into acetyl copy. This reaction is the conversion of alpha keto glutarate into um, saxinal copy. Remember, we're producing a TO ester here. So what is going to happen is that this alpha keto glutarate will also be oxidatively decarboxylated. NAD plus, NADH plus mm -hmm. H plus produced, which we are calling energy. At the same time, the CoA is coming in and carbon dioxide is going out. This is basically what we saw in the reaction where we were producing, we producing acetyl CoA from pyruvate, right? Yes. Because the end product you're going to see will have this CoA removed and CH2, CH2, and we will have this carbon dioxide removed and the CoA added. I should tell you, the enzyme that catalyzes this reaction, what do you think it's called? The enzyme which is oxidizing alpha keto glutarate into succinyl CoA. What do you think it's called? It's oxidizing. It's a dehydrogenase, right? 
And again, this is reaction is similar to the reaction that I told you about. This enzyme is called alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex. It's exactly the same. It occurs similar to the bridging reaction. Is that okay? Yes. So we have the steel ester produced here, and this steel ester sucks now for A, won't be converted into succinate. Well, what this reaction is.